All right, guys, welcome back to Home Built. And in this episode, the plan is to put as much stuff into the engine bay as I can to get it ready to accept the Ferrari engine, hopefully for the last time. All right, guys, welcome back. And those who are watching last week will have seen that I got my Alcantara headliner into the Alfa Ferrari, and uh, it's come together quite nicely. If you missed it, I'll put a link up above so you can catch up. And think about subscribing. It does help out the channel. Um, yeah, I, I'm very happy with the results of the headliner. It's a, uh, yeah, I am getting better at the trimming side of things with a little bit more practice. I've done a couple of headliners now. The Datsun doesn't really count because that's just glued straight up. It's pretty easy. But uh, the 911 was a similar type of headliner that I put into uh, in a hurry. But um, what I want to do is, um, before I get too far into things, I want to go around and just trim all the excess. I left it over the weekend. I left it some, some time to actually sort of the glue to set up as good as it can. So let's go around and trim it up. I'm going to leave all the clips on it, basically until I'm ready to put the windscreen and stuff in because the glue can eventually let go over time. Once the windscreen rubbers and everything are in, that's what holds it all in together. So uh, uh, until that stage, the clips will stay on, but uh, we can at least get rid of a bunch of that excess. So let's do that now. All right, and I just thought I'd mention uh, United Fasteners have just come on, on board on the channel. Um, something that I have been doing for quite some time now, and basically uh, all of this stuff I have uh, bought over the last few years. When I'm working on all of my projects, I don't bother with the old fasteners. Yes, you can use the original bolts, and sometimes if you're going for that uh, factory original thing, you can do that, but there's a lot of time and effort in cleaning up uh, old bolts that are potentially rounded and damaged anyway. I have been uh, an advocate for this for a long time, is using new fasteners. I just have all of my range of fasteners up here and I just get new fasteners so when everything goes on, I get the right stuff that's all nice and tidy. And um, that's what uh, United are going to be uh, helping us out with now. And uh, for starters, they've got me a bunch of the uh, fasteners that I need to uh, fix up some of those uglier fasteners on the Ferrari engine from a few weeks ago. So uh, let's go replace them and, uh, and then we can start looking at the engine bay itself. All right, well, I'm uh, down in the engine bay now and uh, there's hissing going on everywhere because my uh, airbrush is leaking, but I've got my airbrush out and a bit of uh, the subframe black. I'm just going to go around, just touch up these little overspray areas that are around here before we delve a little bit deeper into bolting things on down in this part of the world. All right, that looks quite a bit better. Just tidied it up and just got rid of some of the uh, sort of overspray on the on the black area. It's not perfect, it's, it's not gonna be seen, but I just wanted to neaten it up a little bit before I go into the next step, which is going to be getting in and adding a bit more of this uh, heat shielding. Now, the exhaust, as you might have seen if you followed along for a while, uh, the, the headers that I had to build are extremely tight. There is no room in here. So what I'm gonna do is I, uh, I went on to Raceworks and I got a bunch of this gold heat shielding. So this stuff is uh, um, sort of a good reflective, um, a, bit of a bit of a heat shield. I'm just gonna put it in the main areas where the exhaust gets really tight in the engine bay in here um, and, uh, and at least give a little bit of protection to the sort of the paintwork and stuff. So uh, let's make it gold. All 
right, so I've got the tape in there now and it's definitely not pretty, but that is going to add an extra level of heat um, protection. And as you may remember, I also got the headers ceramic coated. So that will also help with the, uh, the heat management of them and hopefully pump the heat down further into the exhaust rather than uh, bothering me in the engine bay quite as much. Now, uh, the next thing I need to do is I need to move on and start fitting back up steering components. Now, I've got this uh, electric power steering unit that I've uh, previously fit to the car, so it's time to give it a bit of a tidy up. Maybe a, a quick little squirt over some of these sort of more uh, corroded parts. You're not going to see it. it's all hidden down in the car, but we'll tidy it up a little bit and then we'll get it in the car ready to uh, move forward. The next thing I'm going to fit is I have this jigsaw puzzle of brake lines that I pre-made earlier. I need to work out which one's which and try and fit these back into the car again and feed them all through. So let's do that. All right, that is looking like an engine bay that is ready to accept an engine. So now let's go back over and have a look at uh, what we need to do to finish up the engine uh, before we can actually put it back into the car. All right, I have spent the last couple of hours trawling over parts diagrams, etc., of the, uh, the Ferrari 360 engine, trying to work out where all of the vacuum lines and all the different sort of hoses that go onto this engine. Because remember, I got this from a wreck. It had hoses everywhere, and I didn't know what anything did. So I'm starting to get my head wrapped around it and trying to work out exactly what we need and what we don't need um, moving forward. So um, let's work our way through. So um, I had this little piece here set up. This was originally a, uh, a bar mounted here. It's capped off on this end and uh, joins on this end. Looking into it, this is uh, obviously it's a vacuum. This goes to the brake booster, which we do not have a brake booster. So we do not need these valves. So we can um, ignore them for now and move away from that. We then have this other crossover pipe, which would go on uh, roughly like so, the crankcase breathers. And this goes to the dry sump tank, which I already have provisions for. So um, these will be reinstated and connected up. That is, uh, is something we need. Something I'm seeing whether I can get away with or not, we'll, we'll just see, is uh, these vacuum lines here. These vacuum lines here are actually for the uh, carbon canister. So I probably will have to run one, which is something I'll have to um, uh, set up into Basically what the carbon canister does is it takes any vapors from the fuel tank and um, that those vapors are, go through the carbon canister and sort of and then uh, into the engine to sort of stop vapors going into the air from the fuel. Again, potentially I can, don't have to use them, I can block them up. So that's the back of the engine. Let's spin it around and I'll show you what we're dealing with on the front. So now looking at the front of the engine, we have these big vacuum ports on both of the throttle bodies, one's hidden behind here. Uh, they were originally, obviously these things were both facing forwards or actually in the Ferrari they were facing backwards. And um, these were connected together. That actually goes to um, the, the breather on the dry sump tank. That's uh, for recirculating any sort of uh, crankcase and uh, an excess sort of oil vapor etc to again for emission sort of stuff to uh, burn off like 
every modern car does. So that stuff is all sorted and that is all that can all be connected and uh, and run through to the uh, dry sump tank which I made provisions for. Now is where uh, things are starting to get more complicated that I haven't really thought out yet. And that is with down here inside the engine um, those of you might have seen previously me showing you the um, the, the variable inlet system on the Ferrari engine. So basically um, running it over it again for those who didn't see, inside underneath these covers, there is eight bell mounds on either side. So um, there are four that are open and four that have valves on them. And basically, if you can see this, uh, this the bottom of this runner here, it has an open valve on the top of that. So the air comes in, goes straight in there, runs along this valve and down into this cylinder. And they all cross over, they all sort of come in and cross over and go down uh, on opposite sides. But when it hits a, um, a certain RPM level, it actually opens up the butterflies that sit right on top of that valve. And then there's a secondary inlet that goes straight down. So it, it sort of cuts out the length of the runner. So you get the benefit of um, long and short runners. Long runners generally give you better bottom end uh, torque and short runners are much better for high RPM uh, you know, power. This has best of both worlds. Lots of cars actually have some version of this. The, um, the, the engine in the Rockster, the Audi engine also has a, uh, a, a version of this sort of thing. The issue I have is that it's, in the Ferrari at least, it's actuated by vacuum. So these two vacuum ports here go to a vacuum tank and then there are um, some solenoids. When the ECU or whatever decides it's uh, the right RPM level, it switches open uh, those solenoids. That sucks this actuator. It pulls the, uh, pulls the arm, opens the butterflies and you get that high RPM. And then obviously when you back off or whatever, the, uh, uh, it, it does the opposite, they close. And uh, that is how that works. The issue I have is that I don't have any of that stuff. And I'm wondering what the easiest way to set it all up is. Do I mess around with all that vacuum, all those vacuum lines, or do I just go with something like this? So it's an electronic solenoid. This is actually a, uh, one of the central locking solenoids um, that I just have lying around. These are quite strong. What I, the only issue I wonder is, is Will these last for sustained periods with power? So obviously this is designed to be click and just on, off, on, off. And, and they don't stay uh, in that state for very long. Are they going to overheat with uh, lots of actuation? What I'm thinking is I could potentially set them up just to power open um, and then use springs to help close it because even this uh, actuator is naturally closed. I'm not certain, and uh, yeah, I'm just not sure how to do it. Obviously, um, it's stuff that I have to wire up and put into the, the link. I'm just thinking that the, the vacuum accumulator, the valves, the, the, uh, all the hoses and everything are gonna take up a lot of space that I haven't yet, yet um, really thought about because I just always sort of thought, yeah, it's vacuum operated, just connect up to the vacuum and, uh, and when the car has vacuum, it opens up, which actually means that it'll open up when, generally when your foot's off of the throttle. I don't know. So I'm very interested to hear your comments or suggestions if you've got a better, um, if you know of a better solenoid that will do that job. Um, it has a reasonable amount of travel. I'm not sure if this actually has enough travel. I roughly measured it, and I think this has got about 17 millimeters of travel, where my rough estimates, uh, this, it currently has about 22 and a half uh, millimeters of travel, so it's sort of five millimeters difference. It's not that much. I can potentially sort that out with uh, some sort of uh, adjustment on a on a bell crank or something. That's that's that part is easy. It is more um, will this sustain it? Will this do the job? Um, let me know what you think. I just spent a bit of time then uh, taking the 
old one-way valves off and uh, and sort of because I can no longer fit the hard line that connected them, I'm swapping it over for some uh, Raceworks push lock uh, line. And uh, I got one side done in no time. And then do you think I could find this second one-way valve? I only just pulled it apart and I pulled the entire garage apart trying to find where I put this down and I could not find it for the life of me. I pulled the bin apart twice. Um, you know, every single thing in the bin uh, just to make sure it hadn't gone in there. Uh, I've swept the floor, I cleaned up, I did all sorts of things. I spent about 45 minutes looking for this, which I ended up, I actually left in the vice. But uh, I'm sure you guys have done the same thing in the past and it's just, it's just really frustrating when you lose time doing that stuff. And I should be cleaner, but uh, that's just the way it is. Anyway, uh, we have the... Uh, one-way valves now. So now I need to uh, start making myself up a bit of a shopping list for the uh, Raceworks fittings and uh, and then I can get the order in for that and then we can uh, connect all this stuff up. It's all stuff that needs to be done. So I've uh, plugged up a bunch of the vacuum holes and uh, hopefully we can get all the rest of that sorted out. I've got my list ready for Raceworks for all of the uh, fittings and stuff I need to get so I will order that this week and uh, the next thing I need to look at is actually getting the engine off of the stand. Now uh, when I put it on the stand it wasn't painted and it was in bits and pieces and it's easy to get it off, on off the stand when it's in bits and pieces but now that it's all together I don't want to have to pull this plenum off the top every time I lift it up. It actually has these uh, these lift points down here on the sides. It's got uh, or some, some spots for some big M14 bolts. So um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to design up a couple of uh, mounts for that and then try and work out a way that I can sort of strap it without making a mess of the, uh, the prettiness that I've put into this engine. <laughs> Let's see if we can make some mounts. All right, we have the lifting points in and um, I can now connect up just a couple of D-shackles to it and have a good way of lifting up from either side at the front of the engine and then um, I can bolt into the adapter plate uh, at the back so I've got a way to lift up at the back. So um, that is looking pretty good. But it's late Friday afternoon and as always, I've run out of time. So um, I think that means it must be time for Fun Facts with Mrs. Jeff. Hey guys, the 1995 512M was the final iteration of the iconic Testarossa model. It had several significant design changes that set it apart from its predecessors. The power for the 512M was bumped up for the 4.9 litre 48 valve flat 12 engine that now produced 440 horsepower. One of the most notable changes was a new restyled front end which featured a new grille and bumper design. The air intakes are also enlarged to improve air cooling and move further back to give the car a more streamlined appearance. The Testarossa 512M also had wider wheels that improved its handling but it also gave it a more aggressive stance. The suspension was upgraded with stiffer springs and shock absorbers and improved brakes to give more stopping power. Inside the car the dashboard was redesigned to give it a more functional and modern layout and the seats were improved with more supportive bolsters and covered in high quality leather. The 512M was produced in limited numbers with only 501 ever being built. So this rarity combined with the car's performance handling powers resulted in it being one of the most sought after Ferraris of the 1990s. All right, well, uh, I've got most of the bits settled up on the engine now. So uh, hopefully next week I'm working on the Alfa Ferrari. We can put the engine into the car, but there will not be an episode next week. I'm off on a trip on with Harry, so um, I'll fill you in with that later when I get back. But uh, um, for the time being, this is very close to being able to put it into the car for hopefully for good. <laughs> um, yeah, all the little bits and pieces are in the engine bay now, so it's just a matter of lifting the engine in and uh, well, actually, there's the rear main seal and stuff I've got to do when I get it off the hoist. So it's all a matter of getting it off the hoist, off the engine stand, I should say. Make it sound so simple. It's just putting it in the car and... Yeah, 
Yeah. Just, just put it in the car. Really just, what, what are you doing? Just put it in the car. <laughs> oh. Okay, like, subscribe, all those things if you um, and want to keep following. So I'm just losing my words today. I feel like I've been saying so much today. I'm just like, um, like, subscribe, as I was saying. Patreon if you want to help them out and see the videos that ads. And we'll see you on the next one. Well, that's ready to comment. So, yeah, take all care, right. everybody. See Bye you guys. Now. Yes. I didn't stuff it up. I did it perfectly the first time. <laughs> the air intakes are also enlarged and move further back, so to give the car more engine cooling power. The air intakes, <laughs> it's a 5 tub, also had M. The, the tester, the, the tester rasa. <laughs> and the little dance is good. I like it. Thank you. It's like an aggressive dance. See? Dance. <laughs> Stiffer springs and shock absorbers. The suspension was upgraded with stiffer springs and shock absorbers. The seats are also improved with better bolsters and leather, leather stuff. <coughs> the seats are also improved with more supportive. <sighs> Let me do that again. It was a bit, a bit rough. Yes. Yeah, man.